G'day everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm out and about on a short ride. Just going to see a mate of mine who lives at Richmond, which is the historic town of uh, here in Hobart, where it sort of all began with uh, Port Arthur and that sort of thing back in the early 1800s. He now lives there. And on my way I thought I'd talk about a little bit of a topic which I want to share with you. Something I wasn't going to do a video about, something that's a bit personal, and I sort of thought about long and hard and thought, well, if I can save a life, then uh, this video was worth doing. So, a lot of my close friends know, but um, recently I've been diagnosed with prostate cancer. Uh, however, it's been caught at the early stages, and it's uh, apparently within the prostate only. So, PET scans and MRIs and ultrasounds and all that, blood tests and all that shit have sort of shown that, which is good. However, I've got about three days in uh, hospital and three or four hour surgery to uh, have that removed, have the prostate removed, and then four to six weeks recovery. So I won't be on the motorbike, I won't be making videos for quite some time, so I've got to get my core muscle strength back in order. So it is going to slow me down a bit. Anyway, when I pull up and have a moment, possibly want to get back home, I'll go through it a bit more in detail to share with uh, all you other guys. Just coming into Richmond, and Parker, I'll show you around a bit before I actually go and catch up with a mate of mine. Here we go, Richmond, 1824. Uh, one of the first settlements in, uh, in Tasmania, in Hobart, or Van Diemen's Land back in the day, when sort of a spin-off from Port Arthur, where the, uh, the prisoners were sent from England, the convicts back in the day. Anyway, it's a great little town. Uh, it's about half an hour roughly from Hobart, so it's not far. You can spend all day out here walking around. You've got cafes, you've got bakery, you've got antique shops. Uh, you've got a big maze over here, which is really cool for the kids, if the kids are dragging along with you. That's got a nice restaurant as well in here. It's uh, a maze, there it is there. We quite often catch up for bike rides, start to have a coffee there and head off for the day. But uh, yeah, this is we come into the township now. I'll take you down through the town and down where the uh, Richmond Bridge is, the iconic Richmond Bridge, which I believe is still the oldest working bridge in Australia, still being used. It was uh, obviously built out of stone, overbuilt to Bargary, which it would have been built by the convicts back in the day. Just down here on the right is the bakery. You've got a lolly shop there if you're into your lollies. Um, it's, it's everything. Yeah, it's just a really good touristy cafe. Sort of come and have some lunch sort of place. You can see you can see all the terrorists here in their uh, camper vans. Tourists. And uh, some really nice old places. Yeah, they've been fully restored. Yeah, they've got the steep roofs on them. Yeah, it's very similar, similar to the the English style of building. Really steep roofs because they thought it was going to snow here like it does in England. That way the snow can fall off, but we don't get snow here hardly. And this is the iconic Richmond Bridge, as you can see, still being used. What a great little place. If I stand up, you can see, just come in here a bit closer for a minute. There you can see the old bridge. Also built 1823. You can see quite popular with the tourists. Some beautiful walking tracks around here. You go down there and feed the ducks. A lot of people get married down there on that boardwalk. Anyway, I'm going to duck in and see my old mate and have a coffee. I'll see you a bit further on. Anyway, I'm just about back home, so good to catch up with my old mate and have a coffee and a pie at the bakery. And uh, yeah, when I get back home I'll sit down and I'll, I'll go through it a bit more in detail for those that may be interested in uh, knowing a bit more about prostate cancer. Okay, just got back home. I just thought I'd sit down and just go through in a little bit more detail about uh, the journey that's sort of in front of me in the next few days. It all started going back a couple of months ago when my PSA levels uh, started to increase. 
and my GP was all over it and decided to uh, send me off to a specialist straight away who um, decided that um, to, to do a scan to do a um, MRI and the MRI came back showing that there was a, a tumour there about uh, 11 millimetres or about a centimetre roughly inside my prostate and uh, then decided that um, he wanted to do a biopsy to see what sort of cancer it was and how aggressive it may or may not be. So yeah, and a couple of weeks later, uh, day surgery, bit of a biopsy, um, back home, no worries at all. Um, gets the results back. Luckily it's a, uh, what they classify as a T2 uh, type cancer, which is uh, basically contained in the prostate itself. So it hadn't spread at that stage. Uh, and just to make sure, he decided we'll go and get a uh, PET scan done as well, which is uh, where they put you back through the tunnel again. They run the dye through you. Um, you light up like a Christmas tree. If there's any other cancer anywhere else present in your body, it, it shows. It shows up their markers. Uh, and good news, that all came back nice and clear. So long story short, uh, it's contained in the prostate and uh, it's a matter of going to surgery now and uh, two or three days in hospital, about a three or four hour operation to have the prostate completely removed. And then uh, I start the recovery process after that, which would be four to six weeks. Um, probably be able to drive within a couple of weeks. Um, won't be riding any motorbikes for probably about eight weeks because obviously the operation you've got to go in through your, your core, your stomach muscles, and all in through those get disturbed. So it's a fairly intensive sort of operation. Uh, but the good news is you're going to be here, and um, that's something I encourage. Uh, you guys to go and get checked out and um, doesn't matter what age you know I've got a mate that's 35 and it's just been through it I've also got another friend who's 63 and he's been through it or just gone through it and um, I'm about to turn 60 so you're in that generally in that age group where you're more vulnerable but it can also happen at an earlier stage um, and for those guys that oh yeah um, I'm too mancho I'm not going to go to the doctors and have the old finger up the date well that's fine don't do that it's not the end of the world. Um, mine was picked up basically through blood tests. So it's just a matter of going to your GP, requesting a blood test, getting your PSA checked, check your levels. And if there is an increase in your levels, then you know you can go and get some um, ultrasound and, and some uh, you know scans done to see if anything's going on and do it that way. Anyway, I uh, won't go into much more detail than that. Um, what I'll do is I'll put a link below in the description. So if you want to research it more, uh, you can. But I'd highly recommend that you just keep an eye on it, especially as you get towards the age group, started pushing, you know, 50s and 60s. Probably want to keep a bit of a closer eye on it. It's more prevalent around that sort of age group. And it's just a matter of, I've been going to the doctors sorry, every six months and having blood tests done and just your normal tune-up that you get done. Cholesterol and all that sort of shit. So get it done all at the same time. And if your uh, PSA levels start to sneak up, then uh, there's a good chance there's something going on and you can jump into an early stage. So anyway... That's me riding for a few months. I'm going to pack everything up, put it away. I'm off to surgery in two days' time, so um, I might do another video later on after I recover and get home as to how it's all going, keep you updated. I was uh, not sure whether I wanted to do this. I don't normally share my personal life on YouTube, but however, I thought that this could be beneficial to someone. Uh, it could save a life, and it obviously you know, I'm not going to disrupt a family as well. So. Don't just think of yourself, think of all your loved ones around you and uh, get yourself checked out because you just never know. Um, and there's no symptoms, that's the thing. I feel perfectly fine, all my water works as normal. There was no signs, no nothing. It just simply showed up in a PSA test and my markers started to crease and that's how they found it. So they've got it early, they'll be able to get it out, I'll make a full recovery and get on with life. So think about it, it's really important. Anyway, enough of that, I'll keep going. Until next time, ride safe, see you soon.